Welcome to Right on the Mark with your host, Mark Young. You know, going back quite a few decades ago, we used to throw some really cool, awesome New Year's party. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about New Year's parties through the years. You know, I can remember back in the 80s, we used to have high school New Year's Eve parties at uh, some of our friends' house. Uh, you know, the lovely Kim and I were dating at the time, and we would go to our friend's house, David's, and uh, he would throw the most awesomest New Year's Eve party. It was in his basement. Uh, we had, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people show up there. We had a ton of food to eat. We had punch. We had some uh, soft drinks, and we had a good time. We definitely had a good time, and uh, we carried that through the years, you know, hence the name of New Year's Through the Years. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, uh, it's been quite a few years uh, that this has been going on with the family. Uh, you know, we've branched out, we've expanded our family with having two kids, and, uh, you know, we've still managed to have parties through the years with the kids as well. You know, you put them to sleep early, and you keep going. Uh, I can remember, uh, you know... After uh, the lovely Kim and I were married, we would uh, we would have parties. They started out small. You know, we had a small apartment. We had a small townhouse. Uh, but we built we built on our parties over the years, where we'd have you know four to six people, six to eight, ten to twelve, and uh, we just went from there. And uh, it probably all started back in the '90s uh, when we bought our first house. Uh, you know, we bought our first house back in South Park, and uh, what better way? to ring in the new year in your new house is to have a party. I mean, what else are you gonna do? You're gonna ring in the new year with a New Year's Eve party. And uh, boy, the, the you know, half the fun was, uh, you know, uh, making the list, you know, the party list, the food, the drinks, the people attending, uh, you know, friends, family, uh, cousins, aunts, uncles, parents. Uh, basically, it was an open house on New Year's Eve, and it went all day long. That was the best part was uh, you woke up, you got ready, and all you did was party until the stroke of midnight, and then you try to keep going. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was some good times back then. I mean, uh, like I said, it started back in the 80s. Uh, we revved it up in the 90s, and uh, you know, you always had some up years, you had some down years and things like that, but you always like to think that you had more up years than down years. I mean, uh, part of the fun was uh, getting together with friends and family and just reminiscing about everything that uh, you've been through. You know, been through grade school, been through high school, been through college, and now we actually have jobs and we have a house and we took a PTO day on New Year's Eve just to party. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it became a staple uh, at our house, basically, and uh, we'd talk about it all year round. You know, we'd say, oh, how awesome was that New Year's Eve party? Do you remember when this happened? Do you remember when that happened? Well, I like to go through the years, and I'd like to reminisce about what I remember. <laughs> Hopefully, it's enough to entertain you, but, uh, you know, there were some good times, some really, really good times and fun times, and I'm pretty sure that everybody remembers a little bit different of the happenings going on at the party. I mean, I, I remember trying to bring back some cool drinks. I remember uh, doing Alabama Slammers, you know, uh, busting out different uh, different kegs like Lowenbrow, like Heineken, Michelob. You always wanted to get something different because it was New Year's Eve. Heck, you're over 21, so you could drink anything you want. So you always find yourself in a long line at the state store buying a bottle of something different that you didn't have through the rest of the year. So that was always fun. Uh, part of it was we used to get dressed up too. Uh, you know, part of it, uh, a lot of it was, uh, you know, the food, drinks, laughter, but uh, you wanted to get dressed up. You wanted to put on your uh, Sunday's best just to uh, have a good time and uh, just get out there and party. Uh, now we have taken it on the road a few times. Uh, we've gone to Philly quite a few times and partied it out there. Uh, you know, we partied, uh, you know, myself, the lovely Kim, uh, Jimbo, Ricky, you know, uh, Kevin, Leslie, Terry, Jules, Lauren, uh, Roberto, Molina. I mean, we had a lot of people out there we could party with. There's names out there that I can't ever remember. Uh, but the things I do remember is the great foods, the great drinks, and the great camaraderie that we had. We always were talking. We always had something to do. And when we didn't, we played games. I can remember back in Philly where we busted out the Jenga game. 
and uh, we just it just turned out to a little uh, a little game, and then all of a sudden it got really serious because we are half through Jenga and nobody knocked over the tower. I'm like, wow, let's start taking it seriously and let's see how far we could go. And uh, I can remember vividly that we were sitting on a couch in front of the coffee table and we were staring like so strong at it, just just thinking about our next move. We were just concentrating so hard and uh, every move, there was myself, Jimbo, Jules, Ricky, uh, and I think it was just the guys. Uh, you know, Roberto might have been there. Uh, some people that I can't even remember were there and we would take our turn and we actually built the Jenga all the way up to the top where we couldn't fit another piece on top. We actually finished the game where there was no other moves to make. So I thought that was pretty cool. That was, uh, you know, that was always a, a good memory back then. And, uh, you know, it was always cold in Philly when we'd go out there at New Year's. And I remember having a beer ball. A beer ball on the balcony where you actually had to go outside on a balcony and, uh, you know, you'd tap your keg and then you'd pour your drink. And uh, back then I uh, I had a, a tap with me at all time. I It's the funny part is I used to carry a tap with me wherever I went because you never know when a beer ball shows up and somebody needs a tap. So I bring my uh, ball tap with me and we just bought a, a couple beer balls and uh, would tap it. I'm not even sure if they make them now, but back then they did. That was pretty big. If you didn't have a beer meister, you had a beer ball because it came in a box and it came with plastic in a box. And all you had to do was fill it up with ice or snow or what have you. And then just uh, tap it with my uh, traveling beer tap. So, uh, yeah, so that was always good. And you pumped the keg, filled up your brew, and you kept going. And, uh, you know, it only lasted 24 hours, so you had to drink the beer ball within 24 hours or else it went flat. So that was always a challenge as well. You know, that was crazy, some crazy times back then. Uh, just traveling out there was a good time because not only did we do that, the next day we would would go out to dinner and then would uh, hit a couple bars and things like that. But uh, we kind of make it into a long weekend. That's why you always look forward to a New Year's Eve on the weekend. Because you always had a couple days before and a couple days after to recuperate. You know, and then uh, as we got older, we started hosting a lot back uh, back here at home. Uh, we had moved to Cannonsburg in the, the mid-90s. And, uh, you know, we'd like to christen our home with some parties. So we thought, what better way to start it up in our new home in Cannonsburg? Then a New Year's Eve party, and boy, did we start out strong. I mean, uh, we had my cousins. Uh, we had the lovely Kim side of the family. We had uh, friends that we worked with come over. We had acquaintances. Uh, we had people in the neighborhood come over. And, uh, you know, it was just a really good time. And, uh, you know, half the time, half of the fun was prepping for the party. I mean, making out the list. What are we going to have? What are we going to have to drink? Uh, you know, cleaning the house beforehand, just things like that uh, you didn't mind doing because uh, you couldn't wait for the party to come. You know, back when we first started this, there were times where we'd go out uh, the day of New Year's Eve and we would go out and get the drinks and get the food. And, uh, you know, it was so crowded out there, you'd get back late to your own party. <laughs> I can remember being back at the townhouse and uh, my cousins and I were, uh, we were out at 4 p.m. at the bar and I'm like, guys, I'm having a New Year's Eve party. Let's leave this bar and go back to our party. We're like, oh yeah, yeah. So we're so we ended up going to the state store, standing in a long line, coming back with uh, who knows whatever we bought: vodka, gin, rum, uh, Yukon Jack, whiskey. You know, whatever beer we needed, we brought it back to the party and we started over. You know, so uh, it was a good time back then. It was really good times. I mean, uh, up until recently. You know, we've had some really up years. We've had people that would come from out of town to our parties. You know, we had special guest appearances from uh, my buddy John. He was a professional Canadian player back in the day, back in the 70s and 80s. You know, we had ex-boxing uh, champion Sammy here. Um, you know, it was just a it was just a place where everybody can meet and have a good time. And uh, I can remember Sammy getting on a treadmill and just blowing through it and just blowing the circuit out practically tripping the circuit. So I'm like, what the hell happened? The lights are out. And I'm like, oh, Sammy's on a treadmill. <laughs> oh, those are some good times. We had, uh, oh, Jeff and Kim would make a special appearance. Uh, friends of uh, my brother-in-law, Justin, and uh, my sister, Dana. 
you know, he was always, uh, he was always a good time. He'd always like to come over and drink and his wife, Kim would like to settle him down. And I can remember the first time they came is that uh, it was the first time he ever saw the palace. I have a palace in my basement. And after I got done, uh, redoing it and finishing and putting the final touches on, I was able to showcase it at one of my new year's Eve parties. And I can remember Jeff coming over and bowing down going, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too funny. And then after a few shots and a few beers later, he start chasing my kids around. <laughs> I start chasing Sean and then he'd start fights with Sammy and then he would just chase people. And then it was time that, uh, his girlfriend or his wife at the time, Kim, uh, said, Jeff, it's time to go. So, uh, after a couple hours in, Jeff was on his way home. So there was uh, that, you know, that did happen a few times where people would come over and couldn't hold their drinks, their liquor, and they ended up leaving early. And a good friend of mine, Jeff, I would always say, if you can't hang, drink tang. <laughs> I always got a kick out of that. In fact, I still use that today. You know, uh, I'll say today, if I'm going out and somebody doesn't want to go or they want to go home and I'm still staying out, I'll go, look, if you can't hang, drink tang. <laughs> uh, that was always fun, but uh, we always uh, seem to entertain ourselves too. I mean, uh, you know, some some years are better than others weather-wise. We had weather where it was, uh, you know, 70 degrees out. So we're playing football in the front yard. We're catching uh, baseball. We're running routes in the front yard. Then we're throwing softball, throwing baseball, and we're playing wiffle ball and stuff like that. And I can remember my cousin Kevin coming over. Uh, oh, my cousin Rick was there as well. We were just running routes, catching football, uh, you know, with the kids and his kids. And it was a nice sunny day, 70 degree day on New Year's Eve. And uh, those were the days that you liked to plan because you always wanted to cook out on that days. Why would you want to cook in when it's nice outside? You might as well cook on a grill. So I can remember those times. And then there was also times when it was freezing cold out, you know, below zero temperatures where you can't go outside. Uh, you could barely put your, uh, your beer and your liquor outside because it would freeze. So, uh, you, you know, you had to keep everything indoors, but, uh, you know, I had the trusty beer Meister back then and I always, I always had reserves. You know, I learned a long time ago from my cousins at, uh, pig roast and pool parties. You always want to keep beer on reserves, even in college, uh, even at fraternity parties, you know, last call was at midnight, but they always had reserves for the brothers. So, uh, that was always a good thing. So I always learned from that to always keep stuff on reserve. Uh, but we had a lot of friends back then and, uh, Friends that would come and visit for a few parties, bow out for a few years, and then come back, and it'd be just as strong. I mean, there was times when we had so many people in the house, you actually had to leave the front door and come in the back door just to get into the kitchen. <laughs> I can remember joking one time saying, I had to hit the floor and crawl on my hands and knees to get to the kitchen in between people's legs because there were so many people. In fact, there was one time there was people at my party I didn't even know. But then uh, my oldest son, Sean, reminded me, he's like, no. And then he would tell me who they were. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember they were invited. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good times. Uh, you know, my uh, my nieces uh, are a good time, too. Cassie and Raina, I'll tell you, every time they come over, we have a blast. You know, my, uh, my sister-in-law, Bobby's a hoot. My brother, Mike, man, boy, they... They like to come over and party, and uh, those are the those are the fun times when they come over because it just seems to go crazy. You know, my brother ends up barking, or he ends up, uh, you know, turning into George the Animal still and starts twitching and going, "Hey you, hey you!" <laughs> oh yeah, just uh, the memories just don't end. I mean, uh, and I'm sure I'm leaving a lot out. I'm leaving a lot out, and I'm sure if you talk to people that came to the party, you'd hear stories that you don't even remember, or stories that you forgot that happened. You know, it's funny. I mean, we had old neighbors that have left the neighborhood that still call us our neighbors because they remember our New Year's Eve parties. You know, we'll get messages, uh, you know, on our social media by saying, hey, how's our uh, New Year's Eve party going on at uh, the Markwood Drive? So that was some fun times, and uh you know, Sean had a lot of friends when he was growing up and they would come over. And I remember making the blender, uh, the margaritas and making uh, Mountain Dew slushes for the kids or cherry slushes, whatever they wanted just to join the party. I mean, heck, everyone else was drinking. Why shouldn't they? You know, so we had the uh, the alcohol for the adults and, uh, you know, the cola for the, for the kids. You know, I can remember a time 
back when Y2K was coming and everyone was afraid that the computers were going to stop everything in America. You know, everything was just going to come to a, a standing grind. And, uh, you know, computers were going to stop. Airplanes were going to fall out of the sky because their, uh, their computer chips are going to fail. And uh, cars are going to stop. Computers will go down. Lights are going to go off. HVAC systems are going to go off. I mean, people made Y2K uh, survival kits. Uh, you know, I could, uh, I could remember, uh, you know, my mother-in-law and father-in-law having one in their basement. They had a Y2K survival kit. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, it had all kind of survivor stuff. Uh, you know, people were just, uh, they didn't know what to expect. It was uh, 1999. We were partying like it was 1999 into 2000. And then we all waited. We all waited to the stroke of midnight to see what happened, and uh, we held our glasses at midnight, and I'm happy to say nothing happened, <laughs> but us slugging another drink down. That was about it. Uh, no lights went out, no airplanes crashed, no car crashed. There was nothing that happened. Simply, 2000 came in, and 2000 went out, like nobody's business but uh we partied like it was 1999 and uh you know we rung it in pretty good that year uh that was one of our stronger years you know you always want to bang out the, the pots and pans and you always want to go outside and hear the whistles i can remember as a kid going outside of my neighbor screaming happy new year and i can remember hearing pots and pans and sirens going off and dogs barking and things like that and uh as a kid i always thought that was fun i mean that was great if i was in school you know, I had another month off. I didn't go back, you know, till the first or second week of January. Uh, so that was really fun. It was a good time because uh, you got to see your family that you didn't get a chance to see, you know, uh, all the other times of the year. So Christmas, New Year's was always special, I thought, in my book, just because you get to see people that you don't see all the time. They come around, you know, Christmas, New Year's, and uh, as a kid, I always liked that. And now that I'm an adult, I like to have people over as well. I know my brother always hit me up. Hey, what are you doing December 28th or, uh, you know, December 19th? You know, can we come up and stay over? I'm like, of course. And that only means one thing. Party time. You know, uh, that means uh, round up the crew, get the group ready, start washing the house, washing the dishes, washing the glasses. It's going to be party time. So uh, I always look forward to that. And uh, nowadays, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, you could plan on not having a party all year. And then all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, what are you doing for New Year's? I don't have a party to go to. Do you want to host it and have one of your iconic parties? <laughs> of course I do. Why wouldn't I? You know, I'd start up. And then I'd start asking people and then I'd start texting people and start sending the invites out. And then it gets closer and closer. And then you can't wait until the day that you could ring in the new year. And, uh, you know, it's probably been, uh, uh, you know, we've probably been doing this for the last, uh, you know, 40, 45 years that I can remember starting as a kid. I mean, that was always great just uh, having uh, the older folks over whenever I was uh, five, six years old, just uh, seeing my family party. You know, my mom and dad, their aunts and uncles, their cousins come over. Uh, heck, we had people come from California one year whenever I was a kid. And boy, that was fun because California was like a different country back then. And when you talk to them, you're like, what's it like over there? It's three hour difference. That's crazy. I mean, you would call them at midnight when they were home, and it was only 9 o'clock their time. I thought that was really, really cool. I was like, wow, three hours difference? How cool is that? It's midnight here, and three hours, you'll be celebrating. I'll be in bed, of course, because it'll be three, but it'll be midnight your time, and you'll be able to, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to celebrate. But, uh, you know, aside from all the... Uh, all the gatherings and all the drinking and all the eating. Uh, we used to play games as well. I mean, uh, I know I mentioned the Jenga game earlier, but uh, there was other games we used to play too. I mean, we'd play musical chairs multiple times, you know. There would be actual, like, not fights, but actual, like, uh, positioning, maneuvering, and just fighting for a chair. And just, uh, you know, just trying to cheat until you could be the last one, just so you could brag to say you were the musical chair champion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a game called Spoons. We used to play Splash. My sister loved Splash. I'm not really sure of how you play it, but, uh, you know, uh, she always gets excited. Uh, then we, then one year, I think we even played this game where you put a card on top of your head and you had to guess what it said. So that was fun back then. And, uh, you know, there was other times where we would play, uh, let's see, what other games we would play? Oh, we'd play the, uh, 
I don't know, I can't think of a word for it, but it would be closest to the telephone game where you have to tell a story and it started with A and then you have to continue it and start it with B and then you have to continue it and start it with C. So it would go uh, something like, uh, you know, I ate an apple on an island with a cardigan in a palm tree or something like that. I'm not quite sure how that went, but uh, that was a really good game to play. I mean, there was uh, also the grocery game that we played. The grocery game consisted of, if you had to live the rest of your life in a grocery aisle, which aisle would it be? For me, it's a no-brainer. Come on, it's a dairy aisle. Why wouldn't you stay in the dairy aisle? All the milk and cheese and uh, uh, orange juice and uh, uh, iced tea that's there. Why wouldn't you want to stay there? But, uh, you know, my niece Erica would say, well, it's going to get cold there at night when you're sleeping. I'm like, oh, yeah, true that. So uh, <laughs> uh, that was something to think about. But we would play those games and uh, whatever, you know, whatever other games that we would play. I know we played a lot of drinking games, that's for sure. Uh, you know, me and my brother-in-law, uh, Justin, we'd do 10-minute uh, hour tickers. I'm sorry, not 10-minute tickers. Uh, we'd do hour tickers where uh, every hour we had to do a shot. And then in between that, you supplement it with some beers or mixed drinks or whatever you have, you know. And then once in a while... You know, you get that urge where it's, oh, you're on a half fire. Like, let's do another shot. And I'm always like, nope, stick to the program. Because if you go too fast and you don't stick to one shot an hour, you're not going to make it to midnight. And we'd start at noon. So you're talking 12 shots and how uh, many beers in between? I don't know, maybe 30 beers. So I'm drinking a 30 pack. I'm drinking a fifth of whiskey all day. You got to pace yourself. I mean, come on. Any normal person is going to tell you, pace yourself if you're doing that. So uh, I always used to say, look, don't don't start early. You know, wait till uh, wait till the time is right when you start your tickers because uh, if you start them at noon, you got twelve to do. You know, if you start them at three, you don't have as many to do. You know, as I get older now, and as everyone else gets older, uh, you might have to start every two hour tickers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's some good times. Some good times back then. You know, and uh, it always seemed uh, like somebody would be sick too. Uh, either before, during, or after, whether it was alcohol or not. I, I can remember getting sick with alcohol, and I can remember getting sick afterwards just from having the flu. I mean, uh, you know, you're drinking all kind of different stuff. You, you're drinking mixed drinks. You're doing Alabama Slammers. You're, uh, you know, you're drinking some high-end beer that you're not used to. So stuff's a little stronger back then. And, uh, you know, I like to say that I always had the flu afterwards. I never had, I was never hungover. I always had the flu. So that was my uh, mainstay was, uh, I'm all right. I just have the flu. <laughs> but legit, sometimes I did. You know, I can remember one time, uh, well, uh, there's multiple times, but this one time, uh, you know, my, uh, my nephew, uh, my nephew Aiden was over here with uh, my sister Dana, brother-in-law Justin, and uh, we decided to go in the hot tub. Went in the hot tub. I don't know what year it was. It might have been uh, 2011, 2012. We went into the hot tub and we were there to probably, uh, you know, from midnight to one. Then we came in, we had pizza, and then we did some more shots. We had some more drinks and uh, we decided uh, to go to bed. Well, Aiden decides to stay up and have a Mountain Dew and watch TV. And I can vividly remember three o'clock in the morning, Erica yelling at Aiden, go to sleep. Go to sleep, Aiden. And he slept in the lazy boy chair with the TV on and his Mountain Dew in his hand as Erica laid on the couch. Uh, so that, that was another good memory. You know, there's just too many memories to, to speak of. Uh, you just have to experience yourself. You know, uh, I encourage you to start your own New Year's Eve parties because uh, everyone usually has the next day off after New Year's Eve. And uh, that's your day to recuperate. New Year's Day is your day to recuperate. And uh that's uh, it's always a good time to have it, but uh, I always want to have it with friends and family for sure. You know, another uh, another thing I really liked about New Year's Eve parties was the day after. I mean, uh, sometimes you felt like crap, but uh, you shook it off because you knew that the pork roast was coming. Oh, yeah, the pork roast was coming. So my mom would put the pork roast in the oven like around 11 o'clock and would be eaten by three and would have all the fixings, the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the corn, the peas. You know, the rolls, especially the rolls. Oh, man. The, you know, sometimes we'd have two or three tables going because we didn't have enough table space to host everyone that stayed over. You know, you woke up and you're like, all right, what's the body count? Who's here? Who's there? 
Oh, that looks like, uh, you know, that, that looks like uh, Aiden over there. Oh, yeah, that's Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember one year, uh, might have been uh, 2015, 2016, that, uh, you know, Cassie, Raina came over and uh, Sean came over, their friends came over, uh, Justin, his girlfriend, and uh, and uh, we were partying and, uh, you know, Sean brought his dog. I'm like, sure. And I'm not a dog lover. I mean, I don't mind dogs as long as they're not in my house or I don't have to take care of them. But uh, Sean brought his dog and the dog was inside along with Cassie's dog. So Cassie's dog's name is Bentley and Sean's dog's name is Benelli. And that New Year's Eve was out of control because all I saw was dogs in my house. And I thought I was hallucinating because I've never had dogs in my house. But hey, you got to love the kids. You got to love the pets, you know, and I love the names. I mean, what better name is Benelli and Bentley? Uh, so that was pretty fun. And I remember waking up to seeing a fort of pillows made in the den where Cassie and her friends slept. And uh, Bentley was a small dog. Not sure what type of dog he is, but he's a small dog and he couldn't get out of the fort made out of pillows. So that was always funny. And uh, Sean slept in a basement with Benelli. Uh, so that was always uh, a fun time to talk about. I mean, uh, that could happen again. I know Cassie's married. Uh, Sean's not, but hey, it could happen again. So there's always that for us. <laughs> uh, there was even times we'd have a movie after, uh, you know, after we had pork. After we had the pork dinner on New Year's Day, sometimes we'd have a movie. Maybe it was before or maybe it was after. You know, there was uh, end of days I could remember. Uh, we'd watch that movie or we'd put on uh, U571 or we would watch... Uh, uh, I want to say uh, The Expendables or something like that. Or, you know, Erica was big uh, back then with The Perfect Storm. Or would watch Titanic when that came out. So some movie, some iconic movie came out and we ended up watching it on New Year's Day morning or New Year's Day afternoon. And that was just kind of our chill day before uh, my mom made the dinner, which was, uh, you know, uh, we couldn't wait. It just smelled so good. And, uh, you know, we didn't have to do much. My mom took over the kitchen. And we just have to point her in the right direction, show her where the pots and pans were. <laughs> then I would come out with a dessert, which is usually ice cream, frozen ice cream, a mixed bag of uh, scooter crunches, ice cream sandwiches, popsicles, nutty buddies. Uh, I mean, you name it, whatever variety pack they had. Although the one year, I'm sure if Erica was here, she would remind me, Uncle Mark, do you remember the time you bought the sugar-free ones and nobody ate it? <laughs> <laughs> well, back then, I might have been shopping and didn't pay attention to the package. And I uh, brought it home and passed off the sugar-free ones. And uh, people are like, oh, this is different. Yeah, it's different because it's sugar-free. <laughs> oh, man, that is too funny. But that's about it for all the memories that I could think of right now. I mean, stay tuned. There could be more at a later date. I'm sure we're going to keep be I'm sure we're going to keep making these more and more each year and they're going to be a blast as usual. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for Right on the Mark with your host Mark Young. See you next time. <laughs>